This conference will now be recorded. Let's begin today's session, WebLogic Administration. In this uh, session, we are going to see about what is Fusion Middleware and uh, how it is contributing towards a uh, couple of uh, products from the Oracle. So in this, uh, we try to understand what is uh, WebLogic High Level Overview and how that evolved, what are the versions, couple of versions are uh, changing from uh, since 10 years uh, when uh, Oracle acquired. So what are the each version is focused on and, uh, 12C is almost focused on nine years. I think uh, that is a base version. We understand why it is so and what is there. And we also look for the what are the supported platforms and uh, fusion middleware products like SOA engagement platforms, DevOps, uh, sorry, developer ADF platforms, etc. And uh, then move on to the installation process. So what are the prerequisites required to uh, work on the web logic okay so then we move on to the installation process so hope you are having the system with the minimum 8 gb ram Ravi. uh no no just now i checked it's my system is a 4 gb only i will do that one today like i will increase that one okay so if not you can connect to the aws instance if it is uh, not sufficient then that is also fine anything okay. is fine yeah okay. so who can do this web logic administration course anyone who are working with the devops and middleware technologies in the current trend and anybody who are already into the java j2 development uh, who are working on java 8 and 11 versions system administrators who are into the same process and architects who are uh, working with the java based applications it infrastructure management all right, so uh, what are the tools which are required to work on this particular web logic um, learnings? So I think these are the set which we should have on our uh, desktop to work on the web logic administration. Notepad, minimum uh, editing facility, which will give the line numbers. That is what uh, I look for. Uh, even if you go for the latest versions of editors like code visual studio code also fine and uh, putty is required to connect with the linux boxes every practical what we are going to do that is uh, uh, linux box communication only and uh, the linux installation linux operating system which you are going to have that is on the virtual box and these virtual boxes we don't configure entire step-by-step -step operating systems that is not required we are going to use a small file that is called vagrant file so vagrant is one of the simple small uh, software layer that will help you to bring up the virtual boxes so that is a latest trend or virtualization cloud technologies uh, which are going on that we can use here to communicate between the windows system and your um, uh, linux systems sometimes you might need a uh, win SCP. and uh, if you are going to work with the database um, in most of the projects it is a requirement so sql developer is required to check the tables and database connectivity etc okay so these are the basic tools required as and when it is required i will tell you and you can download and install that one the next uh, stack we are, what you are seeing here uh, the virtual box if you are having vagrant box then you don't need vmware so it is the easiest one if you are using uh, vm uh, this virtual box uh, virtualization uh, i help you to create one of the operating system so this operating system could be Ubuntu, Windows, or Red Hat, or CentOS, anything that uh, you just need to mention in the Vagrant file, and it is going to pull uh, from the internet or Vagrant cloud. It creates the operating system for you. Simply, you need to connect from the Putty terminal. The next, uh, after the platform is ready, this immediate level is uh, Java. So current latest version of WebLogic uh, 12C, that 12c requires minimum uh, requirement is java 8 the initial states of uh, 
Weblogic 12C, that is 12.1.3, that time you can use uh, JDK 1.7. But if you are using the latest version, 12.2.1.3, then that is um, latest version JDK is required. Uh, JDK 8, 1.8 is required. Uh, other than this, on your Linux box, you must have OpenSSL for configuring the SSL and uh, web server when we come to the proxy configuration that time we are going to use uh, apache web server configurations so that is uh, another software which we need to download and use it so all this softwares list um, is middle middleware related stuff on the right side you are going to see the database so for experimenting our lab setting we are going to use oracle xe database okay so just going towards um, my browser let me go to the browser ah, right here so entire course will be uh, run through the notes and other stuff what we have prepared is here weblogic 12c essential certificate so this blog is specially prepared or developed only for the web project. So if you look at this content right side of here, this blog page, there is a content kickstart downloads. Okay. So if you look at this, you can have the um, download links. What are the softwares? Whatever I told now, all the softwares links are available. You just simply go to that page and uh, access that one. So I'm just pinging you in the go to meeting chat. Okay. Oh, okay. Open this page on your system. All right, um, that is one thing. So after this one, you open each one in uh, one tab and you try to get the latest versions of that softwares. Vagrant, if you are going, you I hope you are working on Windows. So Windows 64, uh, you need to download. Okay, so if you are going for the virtual box, the latest version of the virtual box, you can go to the 6.2. Uh, the latest version 6.0.12 uh, no not that 6.2 uh, all beta you can ignore you can directly go to the 6.0.12 that is a latest version of the vagrant so if you go here you can find the exe file for windows i hope you are on windows right yeah no 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 i'm in linux actually no no i worked in linux i know this uh, exe file okay fine so vagrant virtual box if you download and install the next step is here okay so we are creating a vagrant file and then uh, the vagrant file to bring up vagrant up command we are going to use and internally it is going to call the virtual box virtual box uses the vbox manage command to bring up the linux box okay so if you are going to use this one so there are some sample uh, vagrant files are here that depends on which uh, Linux box you want to bring up. So here I have uh, Precise64, that is a Ubuntu operating system. So you can just simply copy these uh, 13 lines, put into your Vagrant file and say Vagrant up command. So then it is going to bring up, it will give something like this. After that, you can connect with the PuTTY terminal. Okay, so after uh, connecting with your PuTTY, uh, you can save that uh, with a IP, IP address and um, yeah the so next part of the next uh, thing what you are going to do is uh, user related stuff so let me go back to my slide again and uh, move on to the next things so let me understand uh, let me try to give you complete uh, architecture understanding about the web logic so entire architecture is a real time uh, real time uh, scenarios where you can to fit this web logic as a middleware so front end and back end, if you are going to see the browser, it's going to access some URL. It may be e-commerce portal, it may be banking, it may be uh, insurance domain application URL. So that application URL is processed from the presentation layer. The presentation layer is going to have the load balancer and your web servers. The connection internally it is going to have and in between there could be some firewalls as well. So web server takes that request and pass it to the backend uh, web server, WebLogic web server, and it, you can have more number of WebLogic web servers that can 
send the request to the backend business layer system so where the actual logic will work so that is the where the business changes hdfc bank logic will be different icic business logic will be different that depends on the rate of interest etc so logic will be run from this business layer uh, servers okay so that will actually connect to the backend systems the backend systems could be database so each one each set of the servers are going to be loosely coupled the advantage of this uh, entire architecture is loose couple why we need a loose couple you are going to have something wrong on the one of the machine then the one web logic server goes down other web logic server still continue your business you don't have any hassle or it is highly available so that is the greatness of this middleware technology. So if something goes uh, worst in the other other side, like uh, on Apache side or on the web logic uh, connecting to the backend, that is a database side, even then you don't have any problems. So the problems are isolated completely. Every system is isolated. Database systems are isolated. Middleware systems are isolated. Uh, web servers, load balancers are isolated. So one uh, system problem cannot uh, control or stops anything with another. So that is why we are going to use the entire architecture when it is uh, enterprise level applications. Okay, so multi-tendency where you're going to have the, it is capable to run on the clouds. It can run on the Amazon cloud. It may run on digital ocean or it may run on your um, Oracle clouds as well. So there are multiple clouds it is supported and you can make this web logic domains uh, web logic systems available on the multi tendency systems. You can integrate with the different systems uh, solutions like uh, a one bank system is running on uh, web logic another bank system is running on web sphere still we can communicate. So that communication is possible using the integration solutions. There could be a communication using JMS or it may be SOA architecture or it may be ESB architecture. There are multiple options are there. So that is supported from your web logic server. Okay, so this is our entire architecture available in web logic. Okay, yeah, hi Bonger, one small dot for me here. Okay, yeah, here in presentation we have some web logic servers and here in business layer we have some web logic servers. Like uh, how this interaction will be like something like uh, what the use of uh, keeping in presentation layer and in business layer separately separately. Yeah, the points which are bullet points here that is a uh, advantage you are going to get. So if you are going to keep everything in one server, you can save the system. Mm -hmm. But uh, if if one server goes down, uh, the entire system blocks. So if you are having the huge network, uh, if you are working on the, the application runs on the entire country, like uh, HDFC running the multiple data centers, it might have the data center in Mumbai, data center in Delhi, data center in Hyderabad, let's say just for three. So in three data centers, they are going to have uh, web application servers, web web logic servers more number of requests those are presentation layer comes in presentation layer you mean to say in presentation layer you are going to have all these web logic servers running so at one okay. central level you are going to have the business layer so why we are making breakout or uh, so uh, as much as you break into multiple servers it is going to have more security for your entire system first point is that one and the second point is loose couple if one system goes down one data center goes down what happens still your business goes uh, running and you can run it from the other data center that is a advantage you can get and isolated systems as i mentioned one uh, layer is breakdown still we can continue backend system one of the database server goes down still you can continue our loaded balancer is failed another load balancer will continue our web server goes down that will still continue. So that is the advantage which you can uh, get it from when you are going to make it uh, more number of uh, layers, more number of uh, servers. Mm -hmm. Second thing is capacity. So if you are going to have uh, 
one server it is able to handle the web requests and you want to run the business layer also on the same system then it will be load on the same system if you distribute definitely it will be hassle free or it is easy to work on so load will be less than faster uh, output you can get expected okay so these are the three points i can say to uh, get entire architecture in the enterprise level okay uh, these like loosely coupled means like we are maintaining a clusters uh, loosely coupled means not a cluster loosely coupled means it is not going to have any uh, bonding so here i'm saying from the presentation layer to the business layer okay, okay. Is you are assuming the web logic server first web logic server connecting to the second web logic server in the business layer so there is no tight coupling there is no one to one mapping it can go to any server in the business layer the request from the presentation layer that can go to any present any business layer uh, web logic server same way from the business layer the request can go to the any backend database server it may go to first rack server or a second database instance anything is possible so that is what loosely coupled no stickiness okay okay fine i got it okay all right so moving on to the web logic uh, versions and uh, evolutions so quickly run through on this uh, second part of the web logic learning so evolution um, let me run through fast so this web logic started with the uh, uh, initial state they started creating the drivers at the 1990s time they created only java based database drivers java just started evolving in the 90s that time weblogic people started selling the drivers jdbc drivers they just connect java program with the databases that time it was a uh, mainframe databases and very very uh, less databases in that time uh, oracle database and db2 database and uh, uh, one of the open source database so these are the three things they are they were using so enterprise level application solution there is nothing uh, exist in that time that time uh, they started selling the jdbc drivers after coming uh, with the java java came up with the specification called j2 java specification j the java specification changed later uh, je that is java enterprise edition uh, specification so once they released that java specification java should connect to so and so uh, drivers java should communicate with the back end system front end system so that concept is uh, started evolving in the 90s 95s that time uh, web logic is also adapted the that uh, specification then they first started communicating with the enterprise level applications and ejbs so uh, the first version they succeeded with the web logic 4.5 so they name it as 4.5 and uh, they able to make the ejbs ejbs uh, they had uh, three types of ejbs session beans and uh, entity beans and then uh, message driven beans so they started with only first two beans uh, message driven bean came after the web logic 6 onwards so first initial state the two types of ejbs are uh, included and they try to give uh, everything is a cli they don't have any gui or administration console was not there first time when they created the web logic server so the servlet was just evolving that time servlets were we using and there is no uh, specification about the web logic uh, uh, web web console so uh, 4.5 is first um, version everything with the CLI 5.1 came with the the servlet specification what they have released the same thing is used to give the administration console weblogic 5.1 is came up with the weblogic admin console and then uh, they focused on multiple businesses there are uh, more most uh, specifications are 
including that JDBC drivers plus this uh, servlet specification, EJB specification. Three things are into that. Um, the businesses are going good with the Java capabilities like uh, garbage collection and threads, Java multi-threading concepts. So the, these things are uh, very uh, useful for most of the businesses. So 6.1 version came up with the new capability called high availability that is clustering. So cluster in the WebLogic introduced in the WebLogic 6.1 version onwards. WebLogic uh, and Java both are moving uh, one one by one uh, side by side and seven version came up with the JMS Java messaging specification implementation successful in the seven version. So WebLogic seven version with the JMS capabilities then uh, MDB also came into the EJBs. So message driven beans are supported from the seven version onwards and uh, there is a huge uh, market for the WebLogic that time onwards. And uh, WebLogic 8.1 is a very uh, biggest successful in the market of the application servers. They came up with the SOA architecture at the time of 8.1. So SOA architecture just started evolving that is included in the WebLogic J2E server. So SOA uh, coding, SOA related uh, Programming is uh, allowed in the WebLogic 8.1 workshops uh, programming capabilities or IDEs are given by the WebLogic. After that, uh, WebLogic 9, WebLogic 10, these are the versions uh, are focused on uh, integration part. When uh, 10, WebLogic 10 was there, that time Oracle acquired. Oracle is also having application server and it is having its own uh, evolution cycle you can see at the right side uh, they they are given different names oracle application server initially then oracle internet application server then finally they came and with the oracle application server only so that versions are all uh, went up to the 10 version and this web logic is also up to 10 that time they both merged together and evolved as a 11g so when WebLogic 10.3 afterwards, whatever the versions are there, that is called WebLogic 11G version. So 11G uh, having the two different flavors, they, they didn't give in the exact version 11.1. There is no version in WebLogic. You never find 11.1.0 like that. So you will be finding only uh, 10.3.1, 10.3.2 onwards. So these 10.3 above versions are called 11G versions. So that went up to the 2012 and a um, couple of uh, patch sets are available. Patch set, patch set 2 like that. So up to patch set uh, 5, uh, the version is 10.3.6. So these are the versions available. The last version in the 11g means 10.3.6 the stable version of 11g means 10.3.6 and uh, in 12c weblogic started with a 12.1.0 and 12.1.1 and uh, goes on so 12.2.1 uh, till that the version number are given in three numbers three dot points after that they expanded that to five digit numbers now the latest version of weblogic is 12.2.1 so this 12c uh, focused on cloud computing the 11g is focused on grid computing so these are the two different computing technologies so what is the difference between this two? 11g means what c means what g means what grid computing means you can have the multiple uh, small pieces that can connect applications from any level it may be presentation layer, it may be business layer that can connect directly to the database. So as and when there is a requirement of database, small size of database should be connected. G is focused on that one. And 12C, the application should go to the cloud and it should be run on any cloud. That is the focus area and each application should be as much as possible smallest size now trend is going as a microservice architecture so that is what uh, focused in the 12c 
So even WebLogic server size also, if you compare 11 G is the smallest size compared with the previous size 11, uh, sorry, 12 C is the smallest one and uh, compared with the 11 G. All right, so uh, this is a evolution version, versions uh, story. And uh, WebLogic 12 C is uh, available with the virtualization concepts. Uh, you can run virtualization on uh, different platforms cloud that is supporting vSphere, uh, private cloud. So VMware is a provider vendor. There you can have this. And if you look at the Oracle, Oracle is also supporting its own cloud. OCI we are going to call Oracle Cloud uh, Industry, Industry Standard. So that is having the capabilities, ready-made uh, cloud application foundation is available from the Oracle. And it is going to have everything available that is uh, what is required to run the application, WebLogic server, coherence, Tuxedo for the integration, traffic director like load balancer, web tire will be available. Everything in the one, uh, one under hood, then you can use it. So the customization, if you want, you want to do your own application, then uh, other virtualization technologies as well uh, supported. So if you are running in a Linux machine, KVM virtual machines, you can create and we are going to work with the uh, vagrant and uh, virtual boxes even docker is also supporting the web logic and you can run in a container web logic server so these are all uh, virtualization platforms supported in the web logic 12c so you cannot create a web logic container using the 11 g remember this point 12c only a smallest tiny thing so that's why you can make a container smallest thing that can run on your web logic 12c okay all right <clears throat> yeah one small dot container means like you mean to say in a vm virtual box or yeah a container concept comes uh, with the docker so docker docker uses containers microservices or uh, one virtual box is having one process that concept is called uh, container so in vm you can run two three uh, processes or you can run multiple things but uh, container will have only one one process id okay okay so we'll we'll see that one when we come to that topic and we'll see more, more on that one okay sure. So Oracle SOA suit, Oracle engagement platforms, these are all different softwares where you can see the red color uh, block indicates the WebLogic uh, infrastructure. Without that one, we don't have this UCM or uh, SOA or uh, ADF platforms. So these platforms all uses the uh, WebLogic 11G or 12C. These are the two different versions supporting that one. Uh, there are two different uh, uh, strategies in the current uh, enterprise applications either uh, the competitors the competitors are here so IBM WebSphere, Red Hat, JBoss or uh, Oracle, Glassfish some of the very less uh, market Apache, Tomcat, TCAT servers or uh, OCI servers or Oracle servers so these are all different competitors for the WebLogic 11G and 12C so that time these are the uh, options to have Okay, so these application servers, Java-based application servers, which are all support the same uh, entire architecture. But uh, across all this, uh, WebLogic is the top number one, 48% uh, stakeholder in the market. And uh, the migrations can happen from these competitors. So if you're aware of the GBoss, if you're aware of the uh, WebSphere or uh, Glassfish, something, then that will give some more uh, extra uh, gain where there is a migration projects if you don't have then don't don't worry about that one yeah so there is a possibility of this this uh, migrations happens so it, it supports a multiple platforms clouds uh, also so if you look at the cloud amazon cloud and oracle virtual box based ob and uh, it is also supported uh, from the uh, strongest operating system what you call Solaris Park Linux all flavors are supported CentOS, Fedora, Mint or uh, Debian, Ubuntu all all Linux flavors are supported so Red Hat flavors are uh, uh, recommended and other Debian flavors are uh, it is supported 
but they are not given in the certificate matrix of your uh, Oracle documentation. Windows NT base uh, windows. Uh, there are two different flavors professional windows and um, server windows. So windows server that is going to call windows NT servers. So they are supported. So that is about the uh, evolutions and uh, <clears throat> uh, where it is going to run. So before going to the installation, um, okay. So far, uh, you have any questions? Yeah, Bonger, I had one small thought. Like, uh, what is this I planet? Any what will the I planet? I uh, heard some I planet got uh, in my office in yesterday so i'm not sure what this i planet will do like i planet is just a web server it is not a application server i planet was a old version and it is no more exist in the present market it is a, a previous uh, generation version okay it's also a, like a oracle platform or what oracle uh, http server or it is like a apache web server HTTP okay. server. Okay. Okay. So, um, so how do you want to go on this practical things, hands-on things? So this part is uh, installation process. I can explain, but uh, yeah. uh, system is required. So you said you have only four GB RAM. Correct. Hmm. Yeah. So if you would like to go with the um, Amazon, uh, you can. No, we go. No, we go with uh, system. We go with system only. I will increase my uh, laptop memory today. Okay. All right. So then I'll just give the high level overview what you can do. Uh, okay. Then uh, tomorrow we can uh, work on your uh, hands-on part. We can do it on your system. Sure. Sure. Okay. So installation is very very simple easy. So it is going to uh, have some you need to understand what are the prerequisites uh, What are the hardware requirements? What are the software requirements? So we just went through the blog page there. It is going to have all the links for download. So uh, WebLogic installation requires two important things. One is Java JDK. The second thing is um, WebLogic fusion middleware uh, WebLogic server so when you go to the admin as uh, sorry so you want to go for learning administration uh, part then it is recommended to go with the generic installer so there are uh, three installers available so what are those types and what are the things which you can see so that is a important thing which you can use for learning the administration part generic jar installation so when you are going to install Mm, using this vagrant virtual bus if you are going to use uh, put it terminal you don't have GUI so when you don't have GUI then uh, you need to uh, depend on the automation or that will be fastest thing which you can do one time you do uh, the same thing you can repeat so that is silent mode installation there yeah, are two actually, options can we UI implement yes no, no no actually one small note regarding this automation can we implement Ansible a part in this automation so here with the web logic yeah yeah you can you can you know ansible yes i know ansible so as most i think it's so because it's in a linux flavor right so uh, we can but yes yes definitely you can do that so and whatever the commands you are executing on one uh, machine same mm -hmm. commands you are going to create as a playbook and you can run it from the ansible uh, master Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can do that. One more thing. What is this fusion uh, like? Uh, how it work? What is this fusion? This what? I come across two times on you. Uh, I didn't get you. What is your question? Uh, you you said like fusion, Oracle fusion. What is? Uh, what is fusion? Okay. Yes. So Oracle fusion is focused from 12C onwards. Fusion means uh, Oracle products. Oracle acquired so many different products and each one is having different functionality. For example, 
uh, UCM. So user content management system. So content management system means it is going to have something which are uh, files which are not text files. So the content could be MP3, MP4 or uh, any uh, audio files or any video files or any PDF files. So these kind of things you want to provide for the user specific. Then uh, this is one of the platform fusion media platform that runs on WebLogic and give the access to certain users. For example, if you take the Vodafone uh, billing system. So Vodafone billing system, you log in with your mobile number and you uh, I'm just giving a general yeah. scenario. You give the more mobile number and you will be getting the view uh, billing, my billing. Then if I click that one, I'm going to get a PDF. So what I'm getting the PDF, it is different from you. Uh, my PDF is different. Your PDF is different. How it is possible? So there is a internal communication that helps to access this fusion with a stack and create the generate the PDF or content automatically. So there is a certain protocols runs on that one and uh, this fusion middleware product will uh, get the content. So that is one of the example where you can see. So like that the, the Oracle is having 200 different platforms uh, which are called as fusion products. Okay, so it is a is separate integrated system which we can involve in our uh, uh, like web logics and we can utilize that particular integrated uh, like whatever it may be like file or something. This base is web logic. So base is web logic infrastructure on top of it. You can have the product. I told you UCM. So this UCM Oracle Fusion Medware UCM. So UCM is one product that runs on web logic infrastructure. Okay, okay, okay. It's like it's so, a separate so, some box we can create and separate we can inject or how we can like it's taking care of the developers or like we also involved to. Yeah, we also involved. We, we should uh, in, give the platform infrastructure creation is completely different. Oh, okay. Okay, got it. All right, so uh, moving on. So you should have a login access to your Oracle product. So support.oracle.com or OTN access is required. So if you are not having that one, please create your login and then uh, you can download the Java and uh, WebLogic software. Okay, so once you download the softwares, what are the things we are going to do? So first step, uh, we are going to create the Linux virtual box on uh, Windows system and JDK we are going to install that JDK is 1.8 we are preferring the latest version so last uh, version released in July so JDK last version 1.8 uh, underscore 0 point, uh, 0 uh, 0.212 something like that so 212 is a sub version sub module version of the JDK that will be the preferred version. Then uh, what we have to download whenever you go to the the website OTN website or JDK download page. There are a lot of uh, options. There are two options. Um, two one two two one one like that It is going to give two latest versions. It is going to give so one will be the stable version. Another one is a, a greedy version. So always uh, upcoming or latest changes are coming in the latest version so you can take the latest version so if you are working on uh, gui based uh, installation you want to see then on windows you can take exe on linux you are going to take tar.gz gz file so tar.gz gz file is uh, easiest that can work on any linux platform even if you are using Oracle Linux or if you go for Red Hat or CentOS or Ubuntu Linux. So uh, as per our background file, we are going to create the precise 64 uh, Linux machine. So that will work. That will uh, use the tar.gz file. So it is uh, simply extracting your um, this Linux uh, based uh, Java. 
so java software will be extracted and you can use that one the second phase what you're going to do web logic installation web logic uh, there are the three different options and two different options for the web logic so uh, web logic installers we have developer quick installer another one is generic jar installer so the third one is uh, web logic infrastructure so that infrastructure if you are going to work with the fusion middleware products then only you can go that side so we want to learn about web logic so don't worry about that infrastructure and other stuff all right yeah. so uh, what is the difference between these two developer quick installer and generic installer so developer version is focused on one single developer who is going to work so it is 200 mb size smallest size and if you take the generic installer it is 800 mb size okay so the size is first in difference and uh, capabilities also differences you can find so developer means uh, it is focused on limited resources whereas uh, generic installer it is going to have uh, cluster capabilities or high availability capabilities in, included in the generic installer okay so that's why for administration purpose learn generic use the generic installer all right so that is about what we have to choose which we have to download okay so hope you understood first we create the virtual box then uh, this on this virtual box ubuntu we are going to create with the vagrant file after vagrant file we are going to uh, bring up vagrant uh, up command creates the uh, ubuntu linux connect with the putty terminal then we are going to install the jdk after jdk installation we can go ahead and install the uh, web logic 12 to 1.3 okay so that is a process so how do we get the prerequisite installed so if you are going to download the jdk so this part you can do uh, right away there is no problem for downloading you don't need a ram size so just download the latest version of jdk uh, 1.8 version the command for installation on uh, two different flavors red hat flavor always uh, have the command rpm command okay so sorry okay so rpm ivh that is going to install the uh, latest jdk whatever you downloaded rpm file or you can use the tar command tar xzvf and wherever the jdk is there that uh, file you have to provide so that it is going to create a folder in your uh, existing directory so after running this you will be having the jdk so there is a different vendors there is a set of vendors available so sun jdk merged with oracle so now oracle jdk we are going to call uh, ba web logic is merged with oracle and they are they have uh, another jvm they call it as a ba j rocket that is uh, up to the 11 g it happened now if you look at the latest version oracle j rocket and sun jdk both are merged and we are going to call it as a oracle jdk ibm is having its own jvm ibm jdk we can get it on the ibm website if you are working on the ibm platform ibm uh, eix machine web logic run on the eix machine also web logic um, development version if you are going to use then there is a zip distribution you just you need to download and unzip that's it generic version you are going to uh, prepare for the test environments or production environments generic will work on the any platform the meaning generic itself tells that it will work on the ibm or work on the sun solaris missions or linux missions or windows missions so what is the minimum requirement to run your uh, one web logic server uh, i need only 512 mb ram to run one web logic server so if you want to create a cluster and test all those things then you need 4 gb that is a requirement uh, i3 or i5 processors uh, intel based processors because we are learning on, on laptops so any amd processor also it supports and uh, huge or bigger processors like spark uh, which is we we need for one cpu minimum 
300 mega at a speed but if you look at the our laptop processor it is going to have 2 giga at a speed it is which is very much high and uh, to work with the practical things we need a minimum 20 gb so if you have 60 gb of uh, space that is well and good it is not really uh, we are going to use but just for minimum requirement so ram display cpu cpu speed we understood these are the hardware requirements for the web logic installation so we understood installation of software so how we are going to install jdk the stuff is completed now uh, os level prerequisites what do you need so in real time production system what we are going to do so we need a user creation separately it should not disturb any other user once you are installing the web logic so for that one we are going to have a separate user separate uh, home directory for the user then we are going to create uh, a shell uh, the user will be associated with a shell that shall uh, easy to work that is bash shell there are ksh sh bash pfksh multiple options are there so we are going to use a bash shell. so then password we need to set for the user okay so that is all uh, about user creation process so that everything is given on the same blog page installation kickstart page is given uh, how to create the user and other stuff okay so to install web logic there are two options we have gui mode and another one is silent mode so whenever you download the uh, fusion middleware web logic server that is going to have a jar file inside that zip file you are going to have jar file to run in a silent mode the command is java and jar so that means java should be working in your uh, prompt then only you can execute installation process to work with this uh, silent mode installation we need uh, two files uh, one is response file another one is inventory file so response file means uh, what you are going to give whenever you run a wizard uh, web logic installation wizard it is going to ask you some questions like where do you want to install do you want oracle support so these are the simple questions and you are going to say yes or no and that answers you can keep in a text file that we are going to call as a response file so there are some sample response files available in the oracle website you can take from that and you can understand the requirement and types of installations there are three different types uh, the samples are there so whenever you come to that uh, sample uh, response file we can understand that we can discuss more about that one so if you are working on development environment zip distribution you can use and you can also install on the vagrant boxes on the docker on we can use the configuration management tools like puppet chef fancy etc to install so that is a simple one line command that we can use in any configuration management tool to give the host where you want to install in remote machine you can ssh you should have access to the ssh and you can do that so ansible also you can try so Maven Go is also allows you to install. So whenever you are going to try to install in silent mode, you have to give hyphen silent option. And there are two important files required. One is response file. That is uh, we are naming as a weblogic install.rsp file. And the other one is, I told you, inventory file. Why we need this inventory file? When you are working with Ora INST.LOC, Ora INST.LOC means inventory in particular machine in linux machine how many oracle products are installed that will be keep tracked with one file this is the file oracle install.los if you are installing oracle database if you are installing oracle client or oracle um, any product any other fusion middleware product that is updated into the ora nst.los file that inventory folder will be created separately and uh, there it is going to have all the information why should we have this whenever we, we get some patches from oracle web logic then the version what is the last version what is the last patch applied to this particular web logic that will be 
verify from this one and then it is going to allow you to the next patch to update on this one so that's why or inst loc is important for patching your web logic uh, yeah Ponger. one small dot here uh, like uh, in a silent mode installation we have to use like response and inventory we need response and inventory file right you mean you said Hmm. Yeah, two files. Yeah, two files. This inventory file will be located in the system where we installed or like it's... Uh, you can give the path and specify where this inventory file is there. In Linux, most of the time, etc is the path where you can store this for inst.ls. Uh, like still, it's confusing for me. Like, uh, suppose... No, confusion is like inventory file. Uh, what is inventory file only? Suppose if we are installing an X, X, X file, X, X system, suppose where we first uh, given the response and then inventory file will be created automatically, right? It once we install this one. No, it won't create automatically. Okay. Okay. If, all, yes. product, if it is installed, suppose you install Oracle database already in the machine, that will create it okay. or inst.ls okay okay the second web logic you are installing then you can give the path that time you don't need to give this path you okay. don't need to create the file or inst.loc file is not required when you are already having or inst.loc already exist in your system so that's why i'm saying this is the inventory it will keep track of all the oracle products okay your in the particular system only. about that particular system only not it will track the some Y system or Z system. It will track only information about the algorithmic products of X system. That's it, right? That's it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So it, it requires to track. You are going to use this file and it is going to install on any machine. You may install on AWS install, a, a cloud, or in your virtual box, what you are going to have in your machine. So that is a basic requirement you should have a java installed and you should have enough space on your system to create your uh, web logic software okay so whenever you run this silent mode installation you can also run on windows system so you just give the java home where it is java installed hyphen jar then give the web logic jar file in linux we are going to give uh, java home then bin java and then uh, the jar file so that is a installation process so once you install environment variables you can use java home path variable should have the java home bin directory and class path we need for weblogic jar file and middleware home yeah, this is not compulsory but if you use this one it will be better uh, web logic home you can refer so uh, here if you look at the class path how we can append web logic home server lib in that one web logic jar file is there so this jar file if you keep in the class path you can execute multiple web logic utility commands for example what is a web logic version you want to check then java space web logic dot version you are going to give so that is a utility command that will work from this web logic jar file present in the class part okay so that is uh, uh, basic environment variables which you need so environment variables if you want in a unix linux machines uh, these variables should be exported you need to export them you need to give the values for them where it is uh, allocated like java home java installed in home slash oracle slash um, java jdk version whatever so like that you have to specify where that particular path exists web logic where it is exist middleware where it is installed so these values you have to add and export them as a environment variable that is a requirement in a linux if you do the same thing in linux in windows system you just need to give set command instead of export you have to use set okay so that is the environment variables we are going to use a bash profile in our uh, linux system so bash uh, will automatically bash shell is all automatically works with the 
two different files. Either it can work with a dot bash profile or you can go for the dot bash RC. Okay, so these two files, whenever you log in automatically, that script will be executed. In that one, if you keep this export lines, you don't need to call again and execute. So export lines will be kept in this one automatically that variables will be available for the user. Dot profile, uh, if you are using other than bash, then you are going to use a, a dot bash profile. I'm sorry, dot. If you are using SH shell or if you are using TSH or KSH, then dot profile will be the option to automatic execution. Okay. So uh, our blog references, blog just now I shared with you in the chat. Weblogic 12c essentials dot blogspot dot com. Uh, you can also search in Google Weblogic admin tricks and tips. That will also gives you the complete understanding about the profile. How do you set for the bash? Okay. So this is the architecture that is discussed in the Weblogic admin tricks and tips. So if you look at the operating system that is run with the OS kernel, that is initiated from the etc init and getty so that will launches your operating system then it is logs in with the root user and you are going to log in with your user let's say you are logging with the oracle user so oracle user is existing or not it is verifying in the etc password file if it is there then it will take what shell it is associated with oracle user is having the bash shell Let's say bash shell, then it is going to have the two options to execute. Uh, it will run dot bash underscore profile or dot bash rc. Any one of the script automatically executed. Okay. So if you are using other than bash shell, then the csh or ksh or sh, their corresponding uh, profile files will be automatically executed. Okay. So that is about. Uh, environment and profiles so these things if you want to uh, work then you must have a system available and uh, we can work on it so i will stop here today's session and yeah, fine. Uh, sure tomorrow if, we can for other things yeah yeah sure Pawan Garu, because uh, oh, okay. because as I'm, I'm a layman in middleware i will ask you multiple questions uh, definitely I am very much uh, ready for giving answers. Yeah, yeah because I'm, yeah, actually I'm like uh, works in infra where uh, I didn't have hands on in middleware. This is the first time where I'm dealing with this middleware. I'm coming to the middleware. So I don't know even, I would like to ask you like what the need of this Java and ODBC drivers and all, how it will work and we do we need to, one more question like for me. This ODBC driver we need to install on the database server or like we can need to install uh, this on uh, only in the middleware uh, server when we come to the database part we will discuss about that jdbc odbc drivers etc so right now okay. we are focused on the installation part don't digress <laughs> too much so too many things yeah. uh, confusing yeah. so what i go with the flow you can ask the questions as and when here we are just talked about the what is architecture how do we make available entire architecture how the installation process takes place in this session and the next session hands-on we're going to do yeah we'll we'll discuss no worries about anything yeah, yeah. could you please let me know, like what how this java what the need of this java uh, like how it works here like in, in small java um weblogic is a java program okay uh -huh. if you want to run a java program then uh, you should have a java installed okay yeah okay okay i got it i got it like for i actually use worked in mysql database like uh, for mysql database back in python need to be required for running of this mysql commands and command and uh, command or inter command the same way exactly. you mean to say this java Most also like need to be required required yeah yeah okay i got it uh -huh. perfect i got it okay praveen so we'll stop today's session 
Yes, perfect. You don't have any topics. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have any questions. All right, we'll connect back tomorrow seven. Is it fine for you? Yeah. Perfectly fine. Uh, if it is seven thirty, it would be much better. Okay. Is it fine okay then. for you? Yeah, yeah, fine, fine. Okay, okay Pravin. We'll catch up at seven thirty tomorrow. Bye. Sure. Okay. Bye.